everything's changed. Everything here down has changed, really changed. Even from my time growing up. The hardware store sort of hung out over the river and there was a toilet with a hole in the bottom. I do remember looking into the toilet and the river was right down there. But there was a time when nobody had septic in this village and everything just ran downhill and got dumped in the river. I lived here all my life. I was born in 1946. <laughs> and I, I lived down by the river, and that's where the house was. I moved, well actually I was born here in East Harvard. I was born in 35, born and raised in East Harvard. I've lived in East Harvard since I was five years old. A few years ago, grew up here. No, 82. I was 13 when we moved up on this road. My, my folks came from St. Albans. The first three of us children were all born here. We were born in Hydro Cospo, but Then mom and dad moved to the farm when I was six. In 1953. My wife and I bought our farm on the Bailey Hazen Road in 1989. Much of the history that I wrote down was published in the Hazen Road Dispatch. The Bailey Hazen Military Road was built during the American Revolution with the idea of sending troops up to Canada. People realized that the British could come down from Canada on the road and attack us, so it was never completed. Both Bailey and Hazen, they had, they had been part of building Bailey Hazen Road, immigrated up to Vermont, and they had a lot to do with starting a lot of the communities and they may have never lived in them. They just got investors together and went scouting along the Bailey Hazen Road because they knew where it was. A lot of that was just simply land speculation. It was an ideal spot for a village because there was both the water power and surrounding it was excellent agricultural land. I think anybody that looked at the area would have predicted that there were going to be a lot of farmers. It was the right place to build mills. There were going to be lots of customers. During his first year, Stevens constructed log dams to create water power to operate its sizable up and down sawmill. Two years later, in 1800, he added a grist mill next to the sawmill. Farmers brought their grain to be ground primarily for animal feed, primarily oats. They had to build a bridge there because all the farmers on the other side of the river couldn't reach the mills. 
citizens of the town were required to work four days in the bridge construction. If a citizen was unwilling to work, he had to pay that amount to get out of working. One other factory that made coffins, and the coffins used the same kind of lumber that would be used for making wagons and sleighs and so forth. The Lamoille Valley Creamery was built on Brickhouse Road, more or less opposite the Brickhouse, and took advantage of the uh, St. Johnsbury and Lamoille Valley Railroad, which ran right through East Hardwick. Train used to stop here, and my brother and I would jump on it and go to Hardwick, or we'd go to Greensboro Bend on it. My dad worked on the railroad track, and he'd be up there working. He's Train go through, and you want to go just for the fun of it. Uh, Wallace Allen, Clyde Canterbury, Harold Prescott, and my father, Harold Rich. They called him Trigger. Let's see, I went to two train stations because my father would take us down, and then we had to come back. Ten cents. And one way. Ten cents. Yes. Ride to Hardwick, maybe go get an ice cream, dub around, and then wait for the next train to come back. There was a station master up here. Would reach out as they went by and grab the mail bags, and the train didn't stop. They let me do it a few times when I was a kid. You have to get pretty close when the train comes by, and it's kind of scary for a little kid. And I had to reach way up high, like I was able to, to grab it. It wasn't too bad, but it was heavy and it was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, everything that was on that side of the bank got washed out in 1927. Everything okay. went. My grandmother, Ruby Luther, and her daughter, Glee Luther, I'm standing on the new decking as they were rebuilding the bridge. And Aunt Tiss was born in 1925, so she was a young, young girl. So I was born in 35. I remember roller skating down the street here, and it was all done. Pretty near everybody in the village had a car or a pickup or also had horses. A lot of houses, they always had a shed. They kept their team in the shed and they kept a couple of cows and chickens and pigs and for their own use. People in the village either worked on the railroad or worked in the creamery. It was the Vermont Co-op and the Whiting Milk Company bought them out. And then they closed up in the oh, early 60s, probably late 50s. Well, they had two shifts. The Whiting Melt Company, which was over on Church Street. This is Pat Hall, Earl Grasset, Howard Green Sr., Fabian Mitchard, Raymond Grimes, Earl Mercier, my father Harold Rich, my father's best friend Warren Bracey, Harold Prescott, and Alfred Sweeney. I remember the place house at the Kramer Pond, right beside the tracks, and I'll guess and probably maybe 30 by 60, I don't know. I went with my father, I can't remember where the hell it was, what pond it was, but they were cutting, cutting ice and had the ice tongs, and well, they used the 
they were basically saws that were for cutting ice. The ice is what kept the food cold. They, they'd weigh it, and that's what you got charged for. Uh, Delivered uh, ice around to individual people in an ice chest. And you open up the top, and they put the ice in, and they chop it all around, and they might come twice a week, I don't know. I was a kid at that time. Remember, 92 years is a long time to remember. That is Melvin uh, Wells from Marshfield. They're called Marvin Wells, and this is his wife, and this her two sons. Well, they were local musicians, and my mother had kitchen junkets here, and there was a couple other places where they used to go and have kitchen junkets. They come to each other's house, and, and you, you couldn't get rid of them. They stay all night. Yep, they danced, they had grand old time. You might find them in any of them <laughs> after a certain time. 